Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and we are coming to you from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank in Alpharetta. Folks, if you need help curing the headaches of administrative tasks, bookkeeping, marketing, maybe you need a presentation prepared for you, well, I've got an answer. It involves an office angel. They're not a temp agency or a placement firm. Office Angels matches your business support needs with angels who have the talent and experience necessary to help you maintain and grow your business on an ongoing or as-needed basis. Your terms, your timeline. They lend a hand when needed and fly off when the job is done. Find out more at officeangels.us or call Chief Executive Angel, SES Cabido, at 770-442-9246. And I've got two old friends here on the show, uh, Mark McKenzie with DocuMax Digital Printing and Tom Martin with ConnectPay. But first, Mark McKenzie, he's the, he's, uh, the partner and chief networking officer, we'll get into that in a second, with DocuMax Digital Printing. Good morning, John. Great to have you here. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good to be here. Yeah. So uh, tell us about DocuMax Digital Printing. What? What's Obviously, you're in the printing business, but tell us more. It's, yeah. There's more to it than that, I know. Well, I like to say we're Atlanta's business printer since 1975. And, wow. Uh, my brothers and I are uh, partners in the business. We've worked in the business for uh, myself about 42 years, uh, and my brother's a lot about that same amount of time. Well, first of all, congratulations on being in the printing business that long, because there are a lot of uh, folks that aren't in business in in uh, five years in the printing business. But, yeah. but to be uh, survive that long, you're doing something right. Uh, it's finding quality people to uh, work with, mentor us, uh, basically quality clients as well, and quality employees. Well, I think we know a little bit of the answer to this question, but talk about how the printing industry has changed generally <laughs> and and what you've done to respond to that. Well, you know, uh, I actually went to college and, and a technical school and learned graphic arts in school. And uh, I tell people I spent like four hours, five nights uh, in a row, Monday through Friday, uh, doing one color separation, taking a photograph and separating the colors out of it so I could print it. And uh, probably about four and a half, five years later, uh, the first version of Photoshop came out. And then it was a, just a click of a button. And that basically changed the way things were done for me. I What I learned, the skills I learned, the craftsmanship became more and more about computers, uh, automation, and the only way to stay in business was to stay educated. And that's really what we've done over the years and finding quality people to help us with those educations. It's about adapting, right? It, it really is. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I have a friend and she, she's a change enthusiast, Cassandra Worthy. And she basically, that's what she preaches is, uh, being a change enthusiast, taking change, change on head on. Basically, you know, uh, fighting it tooth and nail and uh, being comfortable with it. Now, I want to talk about your business, Mark, but let's let's get off the the uh, the that freeway for just a second, because I've got to ask you, you know, this is a common problem that a lot of business owners have. You know, how how do you what change do you trust and what change should you avoid? Right. Because they also (laughs) there's the old comment about pioneers get axes in their back. Right. Uh, right. So sometimes it's it's better to to uh, hold back and see what the adaption of certain technology is. How, how have you gone through that well, problem? Well, it is. You know, it's a uh, cutting edge is also a razor's edge. So, right. Uh, <laughs> right. And it can and it can hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, and over the years, I've made a lot of mistakes. Uh, but you know, we've adapted to that. We've realized those mistakes. But part of it is is having quality people around you, having a great accounting firm that works with you that gives you your financials. It's having uh, quality people in the industry that you know, like, and trust 
that can help you and guide you being informed about what's going on in any industry. Uh, that is another thing that, you know, is, is very vital, but also being informed on what's going on in your client's offices in their business, because you don't want to make these investments without having the clients there to support those investments. Sure. So you have to know what the clients want and need and what direction they're moving in. So, uh, being on the, on the cutting edge is one thing, uh, but also taking a step back and making, uh, wise choices. Uh, and it's, it's sometimes tough being an entrepreneur or a small business person. Uh, for sure. For sure. We're speaking with Mark McKenzie and he's, a partner with DocuMax Digital Printing. Talk about your clients. How, who, who do you serve and how, how do you find them? How do they come to you? Well, uh, a lot of our clients are long-term clients we've had for quite a while. Uh, we do get new clients and that's we get those through. Uh, a lot of it is through my networking, uh, being out in front. Uh, we've acquired other printers uh, that haven't made uh, the cut, so to speak, or have retired and we've tucked their business into our business and there's clients that come with that. We have, uh, you know, uh, long time clients that my very first client is, uh, Demos and he, uh, runs the white house restaurant in Buckhead, ah. uh, on Peachtree road. And we were in that space right next to him for 28 years. And he's the first client we ever used that ever utilized us, came in, made some copies and, uh, we still do work with him today. So it's all about longevity, consistency. And, you know, we have clients that, uh, would be large banks, uh, associations, uh, trade associations, uh, small businesses, accounting firms, uh, law firms, large and small, you know, it's, it runs the gamut. Uh, a couple of clients that I, I mean, I hate the name drop cause I don't want to, uh, uh, push my luck in you, but you know, uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the ballet Atlanta ballet is, oh, wow. uh, is a, is a nice client. Yeah. Uh, they're a, a great client. They're great to work with. We try to do what we can, uh, for them when they have their needs. And, uh, -huh. uh so that's just like one client that, uh, is out there. We have a lot of similar clients. Atlanta Track Club is a client. We don't do everything for all these clients, but we do what we do and we do it well. Sure. And, uh, so Atlanta Track Club, I think, has been a client of ours since 77, 1977. So, wow. Um, so that, it, it has been a long time. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So talk about your passion. I mean, what, what keeps you motivated after all these years in this business? Well, first of all, it's, uh, my wife and my children and my grandchildren. Uh, that's really, and then, uh, also my brothers who are partners in the business. It's my family. Uh, that's really what keeps me going. Uh, it keeps me motivated. I, we also have a, we support a charity. It's called golf for the kids. We're in our 13th year. Uh, and we, we do a tournament over at, uh, country club of the South and we raise money for benefits at uh, the Aflac Cancer Center at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. And we earmark uh, the first $20,000 for a service dog, uh, for their service dog program. Oh, cool. Uh, and that's really, uh, those are the things that keep me mo motivated to, to wake up in the morning and, and do the things that I need to do because others need that, you know. They need my support as well as me needing theirs. Sure, for sure. Now, you're a big networker. You're known for that. People that know you know that. Talk about the importance of networking in a business like yours. Well, you know, it took me, I, I used to do a lot of it naturally. I didn't really uh, think about what I was doing. I was not intentional, so to speak. I just used to go from spot to spot whenever and, and just thinking, well, I'm going to meet some people. Well, uh, about probably 12 years ago, 13 years ago, I became more intentional about networking, about where I hang my hat, so to speak, uh, who I, who I want to be in front of and who I want to meet. So, uh, I had the advantage of being, uh, an early adapter to uh, LinkedIn, which has helped my, uh, networking. I actually do a lot of networking on LinkedIn as well as face to face, belly to belly at certain events. But I like to be in events where 
my potential prospect or buyer will be mm -hmm. or the people that know my potential prospect or buyer are going to be there. And uh, I try to research the event prior to doing it, uh, going to the event so I know who's going to be in the room. And, you know, I target basically uh, try to make three quality connections at every event. And it's not, there might be 150 people there, but I really look for three quality connections. But I also being intentional, I don't network alone. Uh, I invite people to come network with me. I invite them as guests to certain events. Uh, I invite them to come to a networking event, uh, go to a speaker series, all of those. I, I basically am intentional about trying to get people in the room so I can introduce them to other people that I do know. And then if they run into somebody that's just so happens to say, well, I've got a, a catalog I'm producing or a booklet or a manual or uh, I need some brochures for a trade show. They're, they know, well, there's someone right across the, the uh, room that does that. Let me go introduce you to my friend, Mark. And uh, so it's intentional. It's, it's all about trying to be at the places where your prospects are going to be. Well, one thing I heard in that, Mark, is that you make networking about helping other people, not just yourself. That's right. Well, yeah. and, and that's that's the big, that's the key to success is giving, give givers gain. Uh, I think that's a B and I, Ivan Meisner uh, uh, slogan, but he's a, it is all about giving. I grew up in a, I went to a parochial school as a kid and the nuns used to tell me, you know, it's better to give than receive. And truthfully it is because it'll all come back to you. And for it'll sure. come back to you in tenfold. Yeah, so. for sure. We're speaking with Mark McKenzie, and he is the uh, uh, he's a partner along with his brothers in Documax Digital Printing. So what's the big challenge you see? You, you deal with a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of different uh, segments of, of uh, verticals, as you mentioned. Uh, what are some of the big challenges that you see folks going through right now? Well, technology is the biggest. Mm -hmm. uh, it's It's coming at us at such a fast pace. Uh, even in my business, uh, you know, it's all about automating, uh, having automation to do all the tasks that that basically a person did. Similar to me being in a dark room for five days, doing one color separation, technology came in and changed it. with. So now it's just a click of a button. Every business owner I'm talking to, you know, every entrepreneur, uh, the prospects I'm talking to, they're, they're talking about, well, technology and also they need technology because right now, especially the workforce is not out there. The quality of workforce that they need to run their business is not out there. So they, they're having to look at investing in technology and, and automation in order to automate their processes in order to run a successful business. Mm. And it's, uh, to some, it's scary because it's change and they don't know, you know, where they want to be. It's similar to what we were talking about, the cutting edge or sure. the bleeding edge, so to speak. Right. Uh, we're in it together. So uh, I try to stay informed on some of those uh, things that are going on in that world. I try to network with entrepreneurs and business owners. So I'm hearing what others are doing so I can actually share that with my clients. So hopefully they can be successful. If I hear something that relates specific to their industry, I can share that information with them and help them uh, with their businesses. Because if I can help their business grow, my business grows in, in return. So it's all, you know, it's a plus plus, it's a win win. For sure. For sure. Now, as we're wrapping up here, Mark, I, I'm just curious if there's a success story you'd like to share with us, maybe a client you've Help that you're particularly proud of, story well, you're proud of. You know, I'm I'm proud of a lot of clients. Every time I win, I I get to buy myself a uh, Dairy Queen, uh, large Dairy Queen ice cream cone with chocolate dip on it. So when I, I knew I knew there was something I liked about you, you're a Dairy <laughs> Queen fan. <laughs> I, I, if if it's a large enough account, I get to uh, reward myself with that. And, I love uh, it. Uh, uh, the way I look, it looks like I've rewarded myself a lot, but uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't get that many ice cream, chocolate dipped ice cream cones from Dairy Queen. But, uh, you know, I do have uh, several success stories. And, uh, you know, one of the probably uh, the key success story for me is, is that uh, we were networked. Uh, we've been in our industry for a long time and um, we 
have acquired a few companies, tucked them in. And with every one of those comes the opportunity to, you have to earn that business again. But uh, to be in our industry and have uh, a couple of business owners that we compete with on a daily basis and uh, we've had great relationships, friendly competitors over the years. And when they call you out of the blue and say, look, we're, we're getting ready to retire. We have not have a, a, a big plan on how to get out of this business, but we'd like to talk to you and we'd like for you to help us with getting out of this business, exiting our business and uh, basically helping our clients. They, you know, the two uh, most recent uh, acquisitions we've done in about the past five years, uh, both of them were really more concerned about their clients having a home. Mm. Uh, both of them were, uh, they, they had to retire because of health rela- uh, uh, matters. And, yep. uh, but, uh, they were looking at trying to find a, a home for their clients. And, you know, the feeling that, that you get when you're the one that they're selecting saying, well, you guys run a great business. You're honest. You, you guys take care of your clients. You take care of your people. Uh, you have a great relationship in the industry, uh, and our clients would be a most of our clients would be a great fit for you. That that says a lot. And, sure does. Uh, it's it's something that uh, is near and dear. And like I said, some of the clients that we've received through that have been uh, some of the best clients in the city of Atlanta. So that's wonderful. That's great. Yeah, I, I can't think of a better endorsement than your competitor calling you up and saying, "Hey, let's get together." So right. that, that's a that's a great uh, great testimonial. Mark McKenzie, he is the a, a partner with Documax Digital Printing. Uh, uh, Mark, for those that would like more information, would like to be in touch with you, would like to sell out. Right. Yeah, well, I'm always <laughs> yeah. I'm always in tune to hear. Yeah, there you go. Uh, though any of the above, how do they get in touch with you? Well, it's Mark McKenzie. It's Mark dot McKenzie at Documax D O C Q is in quality M A X dot com. My website is www documax d-o-c-q-m-a-x dot com uh it's full of resources uh and tidbits that uh, can help your business and uh it's basically free so uh but you can actually call 7 404-724-9963 that's our office and you can ask for mr mckenzie and you will get one of the mckenzie brothers i got uh, you you will get a mr mckenzie you will get a mr mckenzie All right so that sounds great mark mckenzie with Documax Digital Printing. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, John. Absolutely. Uh, folks, today you're connected more than ever, whether it's your friends, your family, or your life. Renaissance understands how you bank, offering the mobile banking services that you need. And Renaissance also knows that sometimes you need to speak to real people with real answers. And that's why Renaissance has more than 190 convenient locations throughout the South ready to serve you. For more information, go to renaissancebank.com, Renaissance Bank, understanding you, member FDIC. Now we turn to Tom Martin. Tom is with ConnectPay. Tom, you're an old pal, too. Yes, sir. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you back. So tell us about ConnectPay. Tell us about what you do. Well, I'm a payroll consultant for ConnectPay. We are small business payroll processing service. Uh, we have over 6,000 clients nationwide, and uh, we do the the payroll only, and we partner with people in all the other industries that are affiliated with payroll that need payroll data, and we can provide that data to them. So we don't try to sell insurance to our clients who are insurance salesmen. We we, oh, we service them, that's, yeah, and that's then helpful. we try to refer clients to them. Right, right. Cool. So – you're a, uh, let's say, a more uh, local or regional, I don't know what the term would be, payroll service versus, uh, you know, the the big publicly traded companies out there. Yes, we're privately owned, and we are uh, we are the southeast headquarters, or not headquarters, but service providing location for ConnectPay. Cool. Now, I'm sure some of these, the answer to this is somewhat intuitive, but what's the advantage of dealing with the connect pay versus uh, one of the big publicly traded competitors. Well, our clients have our cell phone numbers. Uh, I am a CPA for over 42 years 
now and have been in the payroll business for 23 years now. Uh, so they, they can contact us and anybody they contact will be, will know who they are and can help them. And we don't have to wait to talk to somebody different. They, whoever answers the phone can answer your question. Gotcha. What's the, uh, difference in service now on the other side between uh, a company like yours, you know, a, a more local regional regionalized company versus the online providers? Well, the online providers are, are good for some people, but when you have a tax notice or you have a problem, it's much easier to get a hold of a local service provider than it is to get an answer from a 1-800 number or, or a, a website. You can call and ask me, because the question you're asking may not be what you really want to know. Uh, so we're able to interpret what you're asking and try to help you, guide you through that, and help you come up with the right question to get your answer. Sure. And then answer it. <laughs> sure. Uh, now, and, and maybe the other uh, comparison is a lot of folks do their payroll through QuickBooks or one of the other uh, uh, accounting software providers. Why shouldn't I just do that as opposed to dealing with ConnectPay? Well, if you want to spend revenue-producing time trying to produce your payroll, tax returns, answering tax notices, that works for some people. But the majority of people would rather be making money than trying to save a couple bucks on, on doing their own payroll. Okay, drop, you can drop the mic now. I got <laughs> that was a, yeah. That, you convinced me on that one. But when we start talking about tax dealing with tax notices, you got me on that one. Uh, Tom Martin, he's with Connect Pay. Uh, so Tom, there's a lot of payroll companies out there. I mean, and you mentioned a few distinguishing factors. What distinguishes Connect Pay, and what in general do folks need to look for in a payroll service? Well. One of the big things I always tell people is know the people you're dealing with. Know who they are, what kind of uh, protections they provide to you, who's provi- who is providing the services for ACH transactions and for tax payments. Who are those people? And are they liable to you? And do they are they regulated like a bank, for example? A bank is highly regulated. And if you – we use a bank to process our ACH transactions. If you use a third-party – your provider is using a third party to do that. They, are, they do not have the type of regulations that banks do. So tell me, what question do I need to ask to figure out the difference on that? Because that's an interesting point. Well, ask whoever you're talking to who processes your ACH transactions. Hmm. It's as simple as that. I got you. If you say it's a bank, is it a bank? They'll probably say yes because they don't know and they'll to say yes, but they need to know the answer to that for their own protection. Of course, of course. Now, let's say I've got a small uh, S-Corp, maybe I'm a solopreneur, I've got maybe one other employee. Would you be helpful to somebody like me where I'm paying myself? Absolutely. We do a lot of people quarterly who are sub S, small sub S corporations, and we work with their tax advisor to figure out how they want to execute the payroll. Cause there's a lot of different ways to do it. We're very flexible. We can do anything, pretty much anything you want, uh, on how to produce a distribution versus salary with the help of the CPA. Cause we are not aware of your personal tax situation, but we can work with the CPA to find that information out and help and execute the compensation the way they want it. Tom, talk about, I mean, you've been in payroll for 23 years, you said? I yes, mean, sir. Wow. Uh, so I'm just curious about some of the mistakes that you see biz- small business owners make with their payroll. Well, the biggest We've one- got a short show here, so we, <laughs> I mean, that, we could go on for hours with that, that, that question, well, right? I'll just tell you the two basic ones. Okay. One is misclassifying employees as contractors, and the other one is misclassing hourly people as salaried people. Both of those have very strong consequences if they're done wrong. Okay, so uh, so I'm paying someone as a contractor, 1099, that should be actually an employee. Right. Can you help with that? Certainly. Uh, not what you've done in the past, oh, but right. we can help you going yeah. forward. Can you help me clarify <laughs> what I need to be doing? I Absolutely. guess is the right we, question. And, and okay. show you why and go through the, the – uh, full page of requirements to, for somebody to be a contractor and mm-hmm. explain what that means yeah. and how it applies to you. Okay. So, and then the hourly versus salary people, this is a, this is current information that DOL is raising 
the previous limit on uh, the salary you could pay, which is the first step, not the entire step. But it used to be you had to pay at least $23,600 to have somebody as a salary people. But then you have to go through something called duties tests. So there was two parts to the equation. Most people think, well, I'll just pay the minimum salary and uh, I'll be done with it. That's not the case. Anyway, that number is increasing this year, finally. It, they tried to increase it several years ago. If you're not in the payroll industry, you might not know, but they wanted to almost more than double that number. Well, the first step now is to raise it into the 30s, and that's current regulations that are in the process of being developed now. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, you're right. I'm not in the payroll business, and I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> so what you're what you're saying, though, uh, seriously, is that that someone that that uh, must be paid hourly, and it's actually being paid salaried. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So I've got to be real careful about. Uh, no, uh, actually, sorry. The, the other, other way, way around. around. The other way around. Okay, yeah, okay. You're paying them salary, and they uh, should be hourly. They should be hourly. And and the reason that that's a problem, or DOL sees that as a problem, is that person that should be eligible for overtime is not. Is that? That is, is that, correct. Okay, okay. I at least knew that much. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, uh, and that's something you can help folks with as well. Sure, absolutely. Okay, great. So um, I know you, you'd never get beaten up about, your price, right? So uh, <laughs> nobody ever beats you up about your price of your services. Tell, <laughs> tell us, I'm being facetious, of course. Tell yeah. us about why price shouldn't be the be-all and end-all. Well, actually, most of our clients don't even ask our price because they're referred to us by our current clients or by their CPA or by uh, people who are part-time CFOs, B2B CFOs, those kind of people sure. who they trust. They don't care what it costs as long as it's reasonable. So we obviously give the price and our, because we're a smaller company, our prices are not as high as the big public companies that have to report to shareholders. But the key is what we provide to you and how we provide it. If we're available to you. Whoever you talk to can answer your question. That is a huge problem. Now, the most complaints I get from prospects or uh, clients who used to be with uh, larger larger payroll services that they could never get an answer to, to, to a question. They got put on hold over and over again and, and never got their question answered. But, Tom, I like calling the 800 number and getting put on hold. Well, you're a perfect prospect <laughs> for the okay. major brands. Right, right. So, uh, uh, got it. It makes, uh, makes perfect sense. So, Tom Martin, he's with uh, Connect Pay. Tom, for those that would like more information, and uh, to be in touch, how can they do that? Uh, they can reach us at our Duluth office at 404-410-0031. They can uh, email me at tmartin at connectpayusa.com. Or they can uh, reach us at www.connectpayusa.com. Tom Martin with ConnectPay. Tom, Tom, thanks for being with us. You bet. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, folks, just a reminder that you can check out our show archive at NorthFultonBusinessRadio.com. We've had now going up on 170 shows, uh, close to 400 guests, and uh, you can get on that site and search to your heart's content for some a wide variety of industries, uh, terrific people uh, that are doing great business here uh, in the North Fulton area and surrounding region uh, here in Metro Atlanta. You can find our show on just about any uh, podcast app you want to try. So that's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify. We're on YouTube. So you're pretty much your favorite podcast app. You'll be able to find us and connect with us on social media, whether that's LinkedIn, as Mark mentioned, uh, Twitter or Facebook. We're North Fulton BRX on all three of those platforms. So for our guest, Mark McKenzie and Tom Martin, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio. Today, you're connected more than ever. Your friends, your family, your life. And banking is what you do on your time, anywhere you like. Renaissance understands how you bank, offering mobile banking services you need. At Renaissance, we also understand that sometimes you need to speak to real people with real answers. 
That's why Renaissance has more than 170 convenient locations throughout the South ready to serve you. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Member FDIC.